Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. Make sure you have your cup of coffee with you, a snack. I have my tea with me. Today's going to be a long video. I am going to be doing my 2020 mid-year favorites. So if you are interested in seeing the products that I have been loving the most these first six months of the year, then just keep watching. So, um... I cut my hair like 10 inches. It just happened. And it's a bit of an adjustment for me. I've had long hair my whole life, but I felt like changing it up. We've been in quarantine so long. We've all gone so crazy. And I figured the way that the world is going and the numbers are going, I probably won't be able to get my hair cut for a while. I was like, just cut it all off. <laughs> Anyways, let me know what you guys think. It's definitely a different look, but I like it. It's something new. I saw a few of my friends here do this video and it had not even crossed my mind to do this video. I was not emotionally prepared at all. I saw Rick Clark do it, Charlotte Holcroft do it, Hayes Jacqueline do it, and amongst others. This has been quite a popular video, and like I said, I was not mentally, emotionally, physically prepared to do this at all. This is a big video for me at the end of the year, <laughs> every year, and it stresses me out every time going through my collection, looking through my videos to see what products really stood out to me. So in a short amount of time, when I decided to do this video, I was like, well, I gotta go through my videos and my collection now to see what I've truly been loving this month. It is a lot of products. I have a lot of love for my products, so I didn't want to leave anybody out. And keep in mind, there are a lot of other amazing products that have come out this year that I really do still enjoy, but I really tried to narrow it down to products that I find myself consistently reaching for time and time again. So just because I don't mention something doesn't mean it's not good, or I don't love it, or I don't use it. It's just... I wear a lot of makeup and I play with a lot of makeup and these are the ones that I really have noticed have stood out. So we're going to start off with primers. I only have one primer that has really stood out to me as far as newer releases and newer purchases go this year and that is the Tatcha the Liquid Silk Canvas. I love this. I did not like the original silk canvas that came out but I love the way that this smells. I love how moisturizing this feels on my skin and I just love the base that this lays out for makeup. I really do feel like it makes a difference. So if you didn't like the regular silk canvas, I do recommend you get a sample of the liquid silk canvas because I feel like it works better than the original and it feels better and it's less messy and I really get the hype about this. I think it's amazing and I've used it a lot this year. It's one that I've had to put down so that I can use and give love to my other products because I love using this so much. Next we have foundations and I actually realized I haven't tried that many new foundations this year. Of course my tried and trues are always with me. They're always my most used but these are two foundations this year that I have found myself putting them into my regular rotation. So this first one came out early on in the year and this is the Bite Beauty Change Maker Foundation and this is one of those secret guys that kind of slipped in. I was using it a lot without thinking about it. Didn't realize how much I loved it until I opened my drawers and I was like, oh, I've used this nonstop. I love this because it is so lightweight. It's great for every day. It's not a particularly glowy foundation or anything, but I think that's what makes this so appealing to me because I know I'm not going for a specific type of look. This is going to go with anything. It's going to wear well. It's going to feel light no matter where I'm going, no matter the temperature, and it's just going to look good and even everything out. So if you're looking for a really nice natural foundation I do recommend this. This has a lighter side of medium coverage. You can build it up from light to medium. You can't go higher than that. So if you like lightweight foundations I really enjoy this. I feel like the reviews on this were kind of hit or miss. Clearly for me this was a hit. I love it. I think it's awesome. The other foundation this one I got a couple of months ago on sale and this is the Guerlain L'Essential Natural Glow Foundation. I have mine in the shade 03N and I love this. This is the foundation that I'm wearing right now. This is definitely more heavy duty than the bite one so this is kind of my I want my skin to look really good kind of foundation it still is quite natural gives a natural finish to this skin but the coverage I would say is medium not quite to full but it's a medium coverage that you can definitely build towards full and it really just perfects the skin it wears really well and it's just a reliable foundation so I've been enjoying this ever since I got it I think it's a really fantastic foundation I like the smell I like the bottle it's very different I've just been grabbing for it <laughs> 
this should come as no surprise to you guys. In fact, I've used it so much that it definitely feels like this concealer has been around forever, but really it did just release this year. And this is the Pat McGrath Labs Concealer. This is currently my all-time favorite, most used concealer of the year. I think it gives you pretty much a full coverage. It doesn't crease on me. It looks natural while still covering up your blemishes. I have it in a skin tone color as well. My under eye corrector color is LM9. My skin tone corrector is LM12. And I just think this is the bee's knees, one of the best concealers I've ever used. It's up there with my Armani and my Born This Way. I just cannot stop using this. I've talked so much about it on my channel. I'm just going to keep moving on, of course, to the blurring powders. Again, my favorite powder of the year. I have the shade Medium for my face. I used it to set my face today. It blurs everything and then I use light on my under eyes so that it keeps my under eyes awake. Very blurring powder. So finely milled. Really smooths and perfects the skin and I wish you would come out with a bigger size of these. I just use them so often. They are amazing. All right, bronzers. I have two. It seems that a lot of bronzers have come out this year. I'm waiting for my Gucci to come in the mail. It hasn't come yet. But I have two that I specifically noticed I've been grabbing for a lot. The first is from Kostas. This is their light bronzer and it is so stunning. I love this because it has a little bit more of a natural sheen to it while also making me have some color as well. It's not too warm. Brown's a little bit more neutral, which I think makes it more versatile for more makeup looks. It still shades my face. It contours. It adds warmth, but nothing too far on either spectrum. And then, of course, it has this beautiful glow to the skin that's very natural. It's not overpowering, but it still gives your face some dimension. So I highly recommend this one. I've been loving it so much for every day. The bronzer I've been going for when I want something a little bit more warm, a little bit more dramatic and heavy duty is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in number two medium. This is the bronzer that I went for today. So if I'm going for like a really bronzed look or I just want to look like I came from the beach, this is where I go for. It's a bit too matte for me. Like I like a matte bronzer, but I think I got so used to the Kosas that I'm like, give me all the glow. So sometimes I'll go in with a little bit of a bronze topper or some sort of shimmer topper. I did not stay and it still is gorgeous. It blends beautifully. I love putting a fat brush in this and putting it all over my face. This is a bomb.com bronzer. It blends out so beautifully. Charlotte Tilbury has a wonderful powder formula, as we all know. Moving into cheeks, besides eyeshadow palettes, blushes definitely had the most in the category. I love blushes. So the first one are these Chantecaille blushes. You guys saw when I ordered from Neiman Marcus's sale. I definitely picked up a couple of these and I absolutely fell in love. These have a huge cult following. So many of you guys swear by these and for a good reason. The formulation on these are beautiful. The color is beautiful. I have Bliss, which is this very, very light pink. Definitely not for more medium to deep skin tones, but if you like a nice soft pink, this is gorgeous. And then I also have Emotion, which is the B one. This is more of like a corally color. I'm wearing this one on my cheek today and there really isn't a powder that I feel like blends smoother onto the cheek than this. It deposits the perfect amount of color, just a touch of glow. Everything from the embossment in here to the way that it applies to the cheek, blends into the cheek, and also just looks and sits on the face. I love these. We also have the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow Blush and I got mine in the shade Pink. I've talked about this time and time again. I'm a huge pink blush girl and this has definitely been my go-to blush whenever I want a bright pink cheek. I wouldn't say that the formula is anything crazy exceptional other than the fact it's just good. It's a gorgeous color and you know that you can rely on it. I like the packaging. It's very nice and small and it's the perfect pink color. So if you like that pink blush, you're going to love this color. I also think Dior has one of my favorite formulas. Like I said, this one isn't anything special, but it's solid. It's great. That's why I love Dior's formula. Formula. Moving into drugstore cheek options that I've been loving. This should be no surprise to you, but this year I discovered the Ome Healthy Hue Blush in the shade Nearly Nude. I did see they have a few more colors. I need to go pick those up. I just love this one so much. This is the perfect everyday neutral nude kind of color. And what I really like about these mostly are the finish that they have on the cheek and how easily they blend and apply. They really apply like 
butter on the cheek. And then the finish is so natural and healthy. It does have a noticeable glow to it without being shimmery. And I just think this is the best product I've personally ever tried from All May. It's incredible. I didn't get a chance to talk about this too much on my channel. I purchased it later when it was released. But it's something that I do find myself reaching for a lot. And this is the Physician's Formula Butter Collection Palette with Whaley here on YouTube. First of all, I bought the Casey Holmes that came out a year or two ago. And I really liked it, but I just thought it was so chunky. I love how this is thin. I feel like Physician's Formula's packaging in general is quite chunky. So this one's nice and slim. Here is Whaley if you don't know who she is. And I just love the curation of colors she put in here. I was able to try this new highlighter formula. I am using this highlighter on my cheek today. I'm not crazy about the highlighters. It's more so the bronzers and blushes that I'm obsessed with, but the highlighters aren't bad either. I love the neutral blush tones here and I love the butter bronzer, of course, from Physicians Formula. I think they have a really nice, unique powder formula in their line. And this I got on sale as well, so it was very affordable to get so many of these Physicians Formula products in this palette. I just think this was such a steal and I love the colors and quality of everything in this. Moving on to individual highlighters. I noticed both of them were pink based highlighters. I didn't think I would ever love pink based highlighters so much, but I think because I love pink blushes so much, I've been pairing them so much with pink highlighters. So this first one is the Givenchy Shimmer Powder in the shade Shimmery Pink. I bought this from Neiman Marcus as well. I got a lot of great stuff from Neiman Marcus if you can't tell during that sale. But first of all, look at the embossment in this. It is absolutely stunning. The pink one is definitely harder to get a hold of. I noticed they only had like one left in stock on Nordstrom, but I just love the formulation of this. It's really soft. It's not too blinding. You don't get too much on your brush at once. So it really is a buildable formula, but when you turn your face, it's very smooth. I'm not wearing it right now, but it's very smooth. It gives the perfect amount of shine to the face without being obnoxious, and it just really blends into the skin. What I look for a lot in highlighters is how does it blend into the skin? When I take my brush and I buff out those edges, do they go away? Does it stay? Does it blend in? And I just feel like I have a really good time with this one. This next one is from Dior. This one, again, really, really hard to get a hold of. They have the coral one a little bit more easily available, but this rosy vibes highlighter from the Glow Vibes collection from Dior. This is one of my all-time favorite highlighters now. And by the way, these two together are incredible, but this is just a beautiful formula. And Dior really kills it with their highlighters as well. I think they have a stunning formula. And just the way, again, it blends into the skin. I don't know how much else I can describe a highlighter other than it smooths the skin out. It gives a perfect amount of glow and it buffs into the skin. So both of these are great formula highlighters and I've been loving them. Now let's move on to eyeshadow palettes. Of course, this is the biggest category because eyeshadows are what I look forward to most in makeup. They are the releases that I buy the most of, that I review the most of, and I just, I'm a bit of an eyeshadow expert. What can I say? The brand of the year so far has really been Charlotte Tilbury for me. I've been loving all of her products that she's released in the past, loving all of the new products she's been releasing. She's the brand of the year so far if she keeps it up. I spent the last three months really wearing Charlotte Tilbury any opportunity that I got from my Charlotte Tilbury rankings video. So because of that, I have a lot of Charlotte Tilbury quads that I wanted to mention, but I just decided if you want to see these palettes in action, see the specific names, how they look, check out my rankings video. I literally just posted it last week and a lot of these palettes that I'm speaking of, I bought them this year and I fell in love with them. First, the newest collection that she came out with, which is the Color Magic collection. Those are an amazing formula. I feel like those eyeshadow quads were even more buttery, blendable, smooth. My favorite from there was Green Lights and Mesmerizing Maroon. And then I also got to try my top three favorites, Queen of Glow, The Bella Sophia, and The Golden Goddess. All five of these quads have been my favorite, but I don't want to talk about those too much because I just did a video. And also, of course, the Pillow Talk Instant Eye Palette has just been one that I've been reaching for a lot whenever I want to go for these pinky tones. The quality of this is so fabulous and I was surprised actually at how much I ended up loving this one. I didn't think I would love it as much as I did, but I just feel so inclined to reach for this one. I actually have a couple palettes that I'm very surprised by, but these really are ones that I have reached for a lot without even thinking about it. So this next one is the Natasha Denona Love Palette and this one, when it came out and I reviewed it, I was like, it's a nice palette, but how often am I going to reach for it? It's so red all of that. Well, let me tell you, I've been reaching for it a lot, you know, 
based on the amount of palettes that I have in my collection, this one definitely outnumbers a large amount of them. I found this year I've really been enjoying going for like colorful, pinky, purpley kind of eyes. And this just has just what I need. I feel very comfortable reaching for this palette. It's definitely one of my favorite in this packaging. And this was a really surprising launch for me that I ended up very much enjoying. This one is probably the biggest shock to me though. This is the BH Cosmetics Summer in Saint Tropez. This is actually on sale at Ulta for $8. They're probably trying to get rid of it, but it's been one of my favorite palettes this year, which is crazy. And you wouldn't expect it from me. You really wouldn't. The colors in here are just so bright, but honestly, I cannot get over the quality of this palette and how inspired this palette makes me feel. There are so many looks I've created with this palette. There are so many looks I want to create with this palette and it's so affordable. The quality of this is exceptional. The shimmers are gorgeous. The mattes blend beautifully and just the color story here. I feel like the colors blend into each other well. I've used this a lot. I've talked about it a lot. It's a great palette. The Vizzy Art Paris Edit has been one that I've been reaching for a lot. This is more mauve kind of purpley tones. These are the colors that I love to go for on a daily basis. So that's why this is one of my favorites for this year. I just think it's the most beautiful color story. So soft, so feminine, so easy to apply to the eyes. Quality is there, color story is there. I feel like this is me in a palette. So this has definitely been one of my favorites. Of course, of course, of course. Divine Rose 2 from Pat McGrath. I could never forget this one. It's not my kind of color story. For me, it's a bit too bright, but honestly, I really feel like this has been challenging me and inspiring me to play with different looks, to see what different looks I can get out of this palette. And really, there is an abundance of different looks that you can create, and it even surprised me. So this one I keep grabbing for because I wanna see what I can do next with this palette, or what look I can get, or what I can do with this color. How can I pair it with other colors? So I've just been loving this one a lot. I had a good feeling when she revealed it, and it's been incredible. The last one, now this one I haven't used a lot, but I know it's going to be used a lot as the year goes on. So I figured I might as well mention it anyways. And this is the Natasha Denona Bronze Palette. Again, a very new release, but I know I'm gonna get such good use out of it. It's such a good palette, great quality. This is the palette that I'm wearing today. I did film a tutorial on this. So I'm going to do like a two or three look video with this palette. So this is one of the looks you're going to see. I just love it. It's so boring. I wasn't particularly excited when it released, but even I knew I was gonna use it a lot and the quality is phenomenal, the colors are great. It's just a palette that you want to reach for when you don't know what to do with your makeup because you know this is always gonna look good no matter what colors you mix, it's a good palette. So that's all we have for eyeshadow palettes. There is a specific type of eyeliner this year that has really changed my perspective on eyeliners, to be honest. And these are the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Liner Duos. I have all of the ones that she came out with right I don't know where my other one is I think I'm missing my maroon one I'm missing my plum one but just know I think these are really awesome now the formula on these I wouldn't say are the best eyeliner formula I've dealt with I feel like the metallics sometimes can struggle to show up especially in the waterline the matte side definitely stays put it's just not the easiest to glide on the eye but they really stay put, which is awesome. More so, how I feel about these is I am thankful for them for inspiring me to use colorful eyeliner in my makeup looks, and it doesn't look crazy, which is crazy. I've been reaching for these a lot. Every time I wanna do eyeliner that's not black, these are what I go for. They are awesome, highly recommend. And even if you don't wanna spend the money on these, look into ColourPop eyeliners and you'll see what I mean. It's been really fun just to play around with eyeliner that's not black and it's not as crazy as you think. The new eyelashes that I discovered this year are from Ardell and they are her Naked Lashes line. If you are looking for great everyday falsies that almost give you a lash extension effect, these Naked Lashes are incredible. Right now I am wearing 421. They have a few different styles but I've only tried 421 and 425. They are so natural looking. You can't even tell they're falsies, but they just make you look so much prettier. They're so easy to apply. They blend into the lash line so easily. I cannot speak enough goodness about these. Like, I need to buy these in bulk and put them in my makeup kit. They're that incredible. Now, let's move on to the lips. Honestly, 
I'm surprised. I did not have as many lip items for you as I thought I would. I'm very good about sharing the love with all of my makeup, mixing up my routine. But when it comes to lips, I definitely stay in my comfort zone and grab for the same things over and over again. And those things I was using last year. So I don't want to mention them again, but you guys know I love my Natasha Denona, my Charlotte Tilbury, and my Becca. Those are my top three formulas. So I always reach from lipsticks from that line. I've been using lip liners a lot this year. So I discovered the Wayne Goss lip liner. I think his lip liners are incredible. They're actual lip liners. Nowadays, in these times, a lot of brands are creating creamier lip liners when traditionally lip liners are a little bit more dry because they're supposed to make your lipstick last longer. And if they're too creamy, sometimes they can slip and they don't really do their job as a lip liner. These Wayne Goss lip liners are traditional lip liners. They're a little bit more dry, but they do their job. And I love the colors that he has out so far. I'm wearing sapia on my lips right Right now but I also love mauve and natural berry as kind of everyday lip liners and I just think these are a great step back into the basics they're very similar to the MAC formula if you're familiar with that another lip liner that I use literally all the time this year this is the BFF lip liner from ColourPop it's literally just my perfect everyday color it's a little bit more of a creamier formula but these are like five bucks so who can complain about that and this is just the perfect everyday color so so if you're looking for a starter lip color from ColourPop, BFF, or any color from the BFF line, you're going to love. I did pick out one new lipstick formula that I did discover this year, and I just love his line and his formula. So these are from Artist Couture. Right now, I am wearing Saucy Gal, so I only have two. And... I wouldn't say this formula has anything really innovative or special other than it's just a solid formula and it smells amazing. It has like a candy scent to it. I don't know. I've never smelled a lipstick like this, but it's incredible. And his colors are what really stands out to me. These nudes are everything. So Saucy Gal is kind of my more everyday neutral beige. And then we have Angel Baby, which is dark lip liner on the lips and then a light baby pink like this in the center to really make your lips pop. I love both of these shades. If I didn't already have the lip collection that I have, I could totally pick up more shades from this line because best nudes. Finally, lip gloss. Again, had a lot of lip glosses to play with this year, but I definitely find myself going back time and time again for Pat McGrath lip glosses. Now, I do believe they were probably in my favorites last year, but I have picked up even more this year. So on the Pat McGrath website, which I don't know if the sale's going on still, but it was today, you can get 20% off. But on her website, she has a lot of little mini trio glosses. And so I went nuts and bought all of them. And I just keep reaching for these glosses. They're so good. So I recommend you get the minis. Right now I'm wearing Flesh 6 for that final gloss. There isn't a gloss that is so shiny, fills in your lips. It has a pretty good longevity for lip glosses as well. So smooth, so comfortable, really hydrate your lips. Fabulous formula. I have quite a few. I definitely have more than this, but here are all of my minis and where I keep them. I just wanted to talk about the minis. Also, my favorite most used color, this was definitely my favorite last year, is Dare to Bear. It's just the most perfect nude, but glosses are one of her best products in her line, and I think they get overshadowed by a lot of her other products, but really, I needed to shed some light on her glosses because they are all I've been using this year. That was it, you guys. Those are my favorite products of 2020 mid-year. I'll be very interested to see what happens the second half of the year because we all know the beginning did not go as we had anticipated, but I definitely had a lot of time to play with my makeup at home, and these are the ones that I've been wearing at home a lot. So thank you guys so much for watching my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you check out the other videos that I linked below if you are interested in this topic, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.